Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Five Ways Edge Computing Can Help You Today. Uh, we're going to give it about 30 seconds, a minute to let a few more people join the webinar, uh, and then we'll get started. So we're just, uh, as more people come in, um, we'll, we'll invite people to join, but let's go ahead and kick things off. My name is Charlie Russell. I work in product marketing for Limelight, and it's my pleasure to introduce today's speakers and today's agenda. The speakers, Ed Beauvais is Director of Product Management for Limelight, focusing on edge solutions. Steve Miller-Jones is Vice President of Strategy industry and partners and has a great background in edge. And what these two folks will be talking about today, uh, first of all, what's happening in the industry and why is it important? And then we do have five ways edge computing can help you today. And what is Limelight doing at the edge? Now at the end, we do wanna have time for questions and answers. So down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a chat box, go ahead and punch in your questions. And with that, Ed Bove, the floor, and Steve Miller-Jones, the floor is yours. Well, great. Uh, so thank you, Charlie. And I'd like to thank uh, all of our attendees today. So if you're joining us in the morning, evening, afternoon, um, we, we'd like to welcome you uh, to uh, this EDGE webinar. So again, thank you for your attendance. We really appreciate the opportunity to give you a quick update today. Um, and thank you, Charlie, for the, for the nice uh, introduction. So let's just jump right in. So what's happening today? We're seeing a number of factors that are driving adoption of edge computing. And clearly one of these, we think about, um, you know, what's one overriding or overarching theme here um, is video. Video is really driving uh, end user consumption and it's continuing to rise. And obviously this has been fueled and aided by uh, COVID. Uh, but in 2020, if you think about, you know, just some of the numbers here, the average adult will consume digital content for over seven hours a day. So what we're seeing by this, and this is also driving users demand for engagement, engagement with content. Um, and it's also, you know, sort of having this trickle down effect, which is driving new requirements for the folks that are providing this content. So really think about it as new requirements for content providers. So what's happening for users? We talk about the expectations that continue to rise, but it, it really is fundamentally around driving more engagement for those end users, whether that's social watching, whether that's AR and VR. Um, it's really uh, the proliferation of video has, has continued to, to um, drive a higher level of service expectation. So better performance, lower latency. And really what we're thinking about here is this is driving more of the adoption towards edge computing. We'll get into a little bit more uh, of what that looks like. So, so Steve, if you could give us some, a little bit more of a sense of what's happening. We talked about the end users, now what's happening out in the market? Yeah, well, as you pointed out, you know, the, the expectations we have are generally increasing in terms of our interactivity, our expectation of how fast things respond. And, and that, you know, we do a lot of work with a number of the industry analyst groups, but um, IDC commissioned some research, um, which we've sponsored here about some predictions in 2021, um, which are, and, and the years going forward, which I think are pretty interesting. And they kind of bring the story together of both what's happening from the sort of um, application side and what's happening from the infrastructure side and helping sort of paint the picture of how the industry is adapting to the availability of the edge. So what we're really seeing right now is the continued build out and availability of what we might call edge resources into either remote edge. So you could think about, you know, uh, multi-access edge compute locations, maybe in 5G, but also in service provider locations. So we're seeing more deployment of resources that could be used for compute. And really the reason that we're getting there is it's 
the, the carriers, the telcos, the service providers are seeing that they've got the opportunity to leverage the networks that they've been building over the last year. So we're getting to the point where there's the availability of resources and the continued capital investment of resources in those locations. So the edge, rather than just being you know, a telco edge um, and, a, and a cloud edge is now really getting down into and towards the last miles and those MET locations. So that's really exciting for us as we then think about, um, I've been modernizing my application, um, have I got anywhere to put it? So, you know, we've seen the, uh, the rise of um, sort of, you know, uh, microservice architectures, service oriented architectures over the years. Um, and what we're really seeing now in, in the research that's been conducted here is that enterprises are really committing to this roadmap of modernizing application stacks. Um, realistically so that they can take advantage of the economies of scale and scope that are offered by you know what's termed as cloud native um, and the ability to integrate those type of microservice architectures into deployment methodologies that can actually make use of the resources that we're now seeing out in the market and so then if we think about our IT infrastructure teams in our businesses um, they're turning their attention to where to deploy to and what type of environment to deploy into. And then that will change um, you know, the number of applications that are being deployed into what we would call an edge versus a, a traditional data center type environment. So these sort of things are all driving together a, a set of trends, probably started with the, you know, sort of the, the, the change in application design and architecture now towards the availability of resources. And so what we're really seeing companies try to do, if we think about the value that it offers in a competitive way, it's all driving towards agility. It's all driving towards the ability to have a level of uh, flexibility, operational efficiency that's not necessarily available in your traditional application stack and in your, your traditional um, telcos, uh, sorry, in your traditional data centers, or even in necessarily a centralized cloud. Your cloud native architecture is a key. It's also about being able to be flexible and use a range of environments to deploy into, depending on really what your application's needs are. Um, so this is a pretty exciting set of data. Um, we, we've sponsored this report as well, which is available on our website. And I'm sure we'll get a link out to people to download that. Um, in the chat here. Um, if we think a little bit further forward, uh, sorry, if you can advance the slide one more, there's a real difference in how we think about um, the distribution of the workloads and what's important. Why is there a difference between, you know, the, what the cloud is and what the edge is? And at the simplest level, um, you could really call the edge a distributed cloud or you know, a distribution layer around the cloud. And the, the key thing is that it's about um, looking at how the interaction between the device the or the user and the experience and, and the data needs are able to be improved. And it's this latency. So in our traditional sense, everything communicates with, with the core cloud. The cloud is centrally located both sort of logically in terms of network structure and physically they tend to be located further away from the end user. With edge computing, which is logically closer to the application and the, the, the uh, application user and physically is deployed in a different range, you're gaining the opportunity to put this point of processing closer to those people consuming data and those systems and services that are generating data from those application stacks. And so that's why we're seeing the, the, the sort of drive away from the cloud um, and the distributed nature of edge computing, um, I think is really what makes this all exciting. And it, it's opening up opportunities for people to really think about what do I need to process where and how, and why does that then help with my application environment? And so we're seeing a lot of interesting plays there. And as you've just uh, moving on there, you know, you and I have talked a lot about some of the challenges that can be overcome with the edge. So, um, how how do you think we should think about those things? Yeah. So so thanks, Steve. And you know what we're what we're thinking about here, and what we've seen is that you know actually the the centralized cloud as as it's built is is pretty amazing. I mean, you've got a number of of hyperscalers like AWS, Azure, and, and Google Cloud, uh, and they've built this massive 
um, cloud computing market, if you think about even the, the, the market size, over $250 billion uh, in 2020. That being said, the edge um, is really, you know, presents some, some interesting capabilities. So if we think about that, you know, the centralized cloud may not be an optimal solution for all of the use cases. And in fact, as you were highlighting, the edge, edge computing um, really highlights the opportunity for people to think about uh, a different architecture. So we think about, you know, there's a number of challenges here and you started to go into them in a little bit more detail. But when we think about latency, what we're talking about is, you know, the, the further that processing takes place from the data, the greater the latency. And obviously, you know, if you're waiting more than, let's say, 100 milliseconds for a response, it wasn't, you know, traditionally that wasn't an issue. But really, it's the compounding effects of you've got end users, you've got multiple round trip times, and what you want to be able to do from an application perspective is make faster decisions. So if you can eliminate the need to pass data back and forth to that centralized cloud, there's an opportunity to, uh, to optimize the, the architecture. The same is true really of bandwidth. So if you think about what's happening, there's billions of IoT devices that are generating data. Um, and you don't necessarily need to send all of that data back into a centralized cloud. And the idea is that if you've got edge compute, you can think about a data reduction. You can think about the idea that, you know, maybe I can curate some of that data. I don't have to pass all of that data. I can use some of that data, make some decisions, uh, and then pass only the pertinent or relevant data back into sort of that core cloud. We talk about autonomy. Um, if you think about, you know, this explosion of users and the need to, um, uh, to individualize responses, well, you know, you've got some, some challenges here. And then if you've got this centralized resource, um, if that fails, you know, all of your users are, and systems are impacted. And what the edge offers or edge computing is the opportunity to distribute um, that computing model so that you've got you know, different environments and different sizes for different environments. So again, um, a solution in one region might not be the best fit for another region, but what it allows you to do is distribute that compute uh, closer to your users. And then you've got a little bit more resiliency in that architecture uh, such that if one region happens to be unavailable for a period of time, it's not impacting uh, all of the other users. Uh, and that, then lastly, privacy, right? We think about um, emerging regulations. If you think about um, customers with uh, GDPR have more control than ever before uh, of how their information is used. And really there's a, there's a similar trade-off to, to be considered around security. While if you think about adding additional edge locations, uh, you're really increasing the IT surface area but again, now if you're segmenting those user populations and those, that user information, you're really limiting your exposure in terms of if they're in the event of a security breach. So, you know, some of these factors are really causing end users and customers and developers and architects to think about what, what new capabilities and what challenges can edge cloud um, address. So, you know, if we think about it's an opportunity to, to uh, combine the use of your existing cloud architecture uh, and you can now add edge capabilities. So the idea is you've got an existing core or you've got an existing on-premise environment. Now you can add uh, an edge cloud and it gives you some flexibility. And certainly we believe that um, you know, clouds and edge clouds uh, will work together uh, and give you the you know sort of the advantages that you have of this distributed architecture. So if we think about low latency, that really speaks to location. So again, now with, with an edge compute offering, you can get to a data center that's much closer to your users and, and provide a higher level of performance. With compute at the edge, you now have some intelligence to, to think about and reason about that data and lower the cost with, with moving that data around or thinking about the idea of having a, this one size fits all model, a broadcast model, uh, you can shift that and make that model more individualized and, and really uh, scope down uh, the, the set of data that's sent and really only um, process what's specific to your users. And then certainly scale. 
um, you can increase your geographic reach. So if you're only in a, you know, a few regions today, um, edge compute will really allow you to, to sort of meet your users where they are. And they can actually give you more insight in terms of what's, what type of experience your users are having today. So again, think about the idea of understanding what it looks like uh, to, be, to be a user in, you know, in one region versus another. And now you've got more insight and more data uh, to be able to do that. Um, and we also talked about you know, reducing the exposure. So again, um, from a security perspective, you've got uh, the ability to, to limit some of those data sets that are being processed. So I think the good news is you, know, you don't have to choose one, you know, a centralized cloud or an edge compute capability. Um, hopefully we've convinced you that you know, it's an opportunity to think about a new architecture uh, that doesn't have to be centralized uh, and allows for more distribution uh, of resources. So what we wanted to do now is really share uh, some of the key examples uh, of how you can take advantage uh, of edge compute today. And really that's it. So as described in our, our headline, uh, we've got you know, five uh, different use cases that could deliver one or more of these benefits. And we really wanted to, to talk about the benefits that customers receive uh, and give some specific examples. So uh, with that being said, uh, I'm going to turn it back over to, to Steve, and we're going to start talking about how we can improve application performance specifically with edge compute resources. Yeah, well, Ed, you know, there's the sort of three things that really go together here, right, it, um, are your general performance of the application. And there are some uh, with bandwidth and then with the latency of the application side, right, the, the user side. So. First of all, application performance, you know, being able to um, utilize service infrastructures that will allow you to spin up a, a, a application instance in a certain location close to that population of users for the application to come into life quickly and to access its local services, get hold of its data rather than it all being centralized. There is definite uh, opportunity to improve localized performance for the application stack itself. Think about how you're best utilizing the resources available to make the um, uh, application available to meet your SLAs, to provide the durability that you're trying to, and give the service availability that you want from your application stack. There are a number of different options as to how you can go about getting your applications deployed. So there are you know, options that give you the most control um, and the, perhaps the highest performance, if you think about bare metal, because you've got control of the machine, but also edge compute then, of course, has the litany of virtualization options that go with it. Hypervisor based, as a, and as I'm sure you'll talk about as well, more serverless options to come. One of the other benefits you gain in application performance at the edge, of course, is the sort of localization of additional services. So, you know, in a case like ours, we distribute our compute services alongside the global CDN and the connected nature that that has. So you're gaining um, a real advantage of deep and distributed and dense architectures for other services alongside the application environment. So you're sort of taking the opportunity, and this is the, the first general point to improve the general application performance by putting that application closer to where you're gonna generate data and use data. If we look at the second point, Bandwidth is obviously a key part of this conversation. There is no doubt that in a centralized cloud-based compute workflow uh, orientation, you're going to be either consuming, creating, or moving large amounts of data around. So there's always a long haul sort of bandwidth concern, and that can become very expensive over time. In a distributed way, where you're able to process in region for creation of data or produce discrete significant uh, and specific outputs for that region um, in more distributed locations, you can optimize your cost um, sort of stature, if you like, your cost uh, uh, orientation to how you're consuming and using bandwidth versus from a cloud where it's just all in one. So it's about being smart about your economies of scale with bandwidth the distributed locations give you an opportunity to improve your economic basis. We look at the third benefit, the real key here, after application 
um, performance in general than the stack itself. Your ability to make better use of bandwidth. What we're really looking at and gaining the advantage of is the interactivity in the end user environment, whether that's a device that's communicating with your application or whether it's end users. It's about the imperative for real time. It's about interactivity and it's about gaining competitive advantage with your applications. If you're able to bring those interactive services to your users and able to ensure that your services work with real time interactivity with the data you're using and creating, you're going to be able to create more compelling experiences and applications that are working faster than your competitors. So this is a real competitive piece for the performance of the data and your application in general. If we look at a, a use case just briefly on those three points, I mean, I think they, they really sit together in terms of the, the general benefit of Edge. Um, this is one of our customers, Network Next, who are helping gamers around the world have a, um, a, a better experience. You know, latency for gaming is really important. You know, we know people overclock their monitors. We know people overclock their CPUs to gain that, you know, millisecond advantage of seeing the move before someone else does. Well, when you're, when you're all uh, playing together, you know, the way in which your application responds to what's happening with the other players is really important as well. So Network Next are looking at dramatically reducing the latency that's involved in network gaming and improving the experience for those players. So they needed a network they could use to deploy their application into that could not only service those end users, but also you know, help them optimize their stack for those that real-time interaction at the edge and communicate back with their uh, origins as well. So the overall gaming experience was was generally improved and it's about for them giving their gamers fastest route to the game servers reducing the latency of gameplay and getting that consistency so that people feel like they're really really um, with the action as i would say so i think those those three three of our five points sit well together you know general application performance eco economics in bandwidth and experience um, how about the other two i think they're a little bit more in this sort of uh, data realm so let me hand that back to you yeah, and thanks, Steve. And, and so I think the other thing to, to keep in mind is there's not just one benefit. You may be able to, to achieve a number of these benefits. Um, so as we mentioned in this talk, you know, end users are demanding you know, much more engaging experiences from their content providers. And really what we're thinking about here and what our, some of our customers are doing um, is they're really thinking about what the end user experience is. And they're using you know, capabilities of compute in combination with content delivery um, to understand devices. They're trying to understand the demographics. So do I have a segment of a particular type of population and do I wanna present something different to that audience? So again, it, it's really starting to shift. Um, we talk about being more engaging. That's actually what it means. It means understanding what type of device and doing something different. It means understanding what type of user and doing something different. And so really the implication is now we're starting to see adoption and uh, deployment of business logic uh, out at the edge. So that again, the, the systems uh, as opposed to, you know, when it was centralized, you know, you might have to sort of have a one size fits all model. Uh, now you can fully realize the user experience that, that a business is uh, depending on. In this example, we're talking about dynamic ad insertion, but it really could be anything. Uh, and we're using both serverless uh, and the CDN to control and to provide this sort of compelling experience. And we're able to customize this on a per user basis. So again, it's really about getting a better uh, application response. Um, the other thing is it's not just all about the end users. So when we think about um, you know, some of the challenges to providers. Again, there's there's more emphasis on video, there are more um, real-time events. So in this example, we're talking about stream security. So the idea that you might be broadcasting a live event um, and how can we help? How can we understand if there's fraud or redistribution uh, of that live event? So in the past, if you're detecting events and you've got hours uh, of time before you can identify that, that's really a challenge. The live event's over and you've really lost the opportunity. Um, with edge intelligence, we can provide a much more dynamic capability that can understand what's happening on an individual user stream basis so that we, that we can actually identify the challenge 
uh, and, and be able to, to give providers the ability uh, to take action. Um, so one of the examples we wanted just to describe briefly, and we, we can certainly go into more detail, and I know we've got solutions on this, but really we think about um, there's some new technology that allows you to identify you know, the sources uh, of, of who is viewing what videos. And you can actually, again, we talk about individualized from an end user perspective. This is individualized from a content provider perspective. So here are the challenges we wanna be able to identify the source of a, of a piracy session. And to do that, uh, we partnered with uh, NextGuard or NAGRA uh, to implement a solution that allows us to uniquely identify the streams. And what you can see here is we take um, the, the content, we create two versions, effectively an A version and a B version. And then when that, when that um, using edge, edge functions, uh, when that content is actually streamed out to users, there's a combination of the A version and the B version that is not noticeable to the viewer, but actually the, the provider will actually be able to uniquely identify uh, the, the session. So if, it, if it's an auto, if this is a, a VIN number. If this is a, a stream, it's really a unique identifier for each individual stream. And this really allows you to identify a, a session and be able to know um, who's responsible uh, so that you can in fact take action. So, so this is another example uh, of the type of individualization uh, that you can, you can take advantage of. Mm. So now that we've talked about you know, some of the benefits, I think we wanna talk a little bit about what Limelight's doing and a little bit about um, what our portfolio looks like so that customers can start taking advantage uh, of the edge. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it's clear, I, I hope to the audience that you know, Limelight as a global CDM, we have a lot of locations around the world. We're up to about 120 something now. Um, and we've deployed compute resources into a number of them, which give us this sort of um, ability to provide the reach and scale and latency that you know, we think edge applications are looking for. Not only that, we're able to deploy them in locations where there are is good access to other third party services. And of course we connect into the last mile networks and the users um, sort of, you know, as I said earlier, kind of like a distribution cloud around the clouds, if you like. So you're getting the benefit of the last mile network, meeting the content delivery network and our ability to deploy resources there. And we've got a few different ways of looking at it. Um, for the sake of time, Ed, I'll hand back to you. Why don't you run through the, the portfolio quickly and then we can get to some audience questions uh, Great. So, so let me just really highlight with what we have today. We've got really three key offerings. One is a bare metal offering. So these are bare metal servers. They sit in edge data center. So think about us turning on infrastructure services out at the limelight edge data centers. Uh, we support three different sizes of, of compute today. Uh, and if you need a custom server configuration for your application or a GPU, we've got the ability to deploy there. Uh, secondly, we support virtual machines at the edge. Again, if you need to scale your workloads, uh, I don't think we need to spend too much time on virtual machines, but again, we've got lots of compute options that give you a tremendous amount of flexibility for your applications. And third, our newest service is a serverless capability. So again, this is our edge function service. Um, you just bring the code, we run it, we scale it for you, and we've got the ability to run it close to your users so you can enable enhanced CDN workflows. Um, you know, again, a little bit more detail on edge functions. You, know, you can get more information in our developer center, um, but we launched this last year. We wanna make sure you're aware of it. Um, we've got great code samples, great examples of, of how to get started. And what you can see here is it's a fully modern um, capability. Again, we've got um, you have the standard languages you, you would expect, Node.js, Python, Go. We've got Terraform capabilities, and it's fully connected to our CDN. So you've got the ability to offer full customization, bring your business logic to our uh, edge compute capabilities. So really just to wrap up, and then we'll uh, have time hopefully for a number of questions, um, but we wanted to cover what's happening out at the edge and, and talk to you about really some of the market dynamics that are occurring. We also talked about the market shift 
um, from an architecture perspective. So that's really driving a lot of edge cloud adoption. And then we talked about five key use cases that offer tremendous benefits to customers and really you know, show some opportunity to, to take advantage of that. So as part of joining this um, webinar, we're going to, uh, to share an ebook. Uh, we've also got a survey. So we'd love your uh, opinions and thoughts on the direction of, of edge computing. Uh, and we also uh, really want to thank you for, again for your time today. So we do have time now to take uh, just a couple of questions uh, before we wrap up. All right. Um, well, thanks, everyone. Um, um, thanks, Ed and Steve, and thanks, everyone who has joined. We do have a couple of questions. Again, there's a Q&A box at the bottom if you would like to ask one. Uh, our first question just is, uh, how do I get started? Sure, Steve, you want to take that? Yeah, I mean, you know, look, looking at the kind of stuff we're uh, offering in the network today, you know, access to bare metal is, is a good way to start taking advantage of edge locations. There are um, ways to take advantage of the uh, edge functions that Ed ran through. So getting in touch with our sales team, um, getting a trial up and running to use our services is, is the best way to do it. There's a free trial button on our website. Um, so yeah, if you want to come and look at you know how how well does my application move into an edge environment go ahead spin up a trial and we'll help you out yeah so it's easy right i mean we wanted to remove the friction for trying these services so check out the developer center check out the free trial and and reach out to us and and we can we can certainly uh help you with that uh with getting started mm -hmm. okay great um uh, another question that we have is uh, we've been hearing for a year or two now that this is the year for edge. What's changed? I'll, I'll take that and then, then hand over to you, Ed. I, I think there's a couple of things we see, you know, from um, the, the IDC report, for example, talks about the amount of capital expenditure that's going to be put into um, the network locations that is, is for compute resources. So that, that's a key indicator that the availability of resources is, is becoming a part of the fabric of the telco and carrier and environments like ours, which inter, interface with them. So it's the sort of the capital investment that we're seeing for multi-axis edge compute locations. And even further out, we're seeing the rollout of 5G locations, whether or not they're using the, the bandwidth different question, but they're beginning to be the locations in the network where we can put resources and take advantage of them and then offer them up in orchestrated ways to, uh, to consumers and people who want to run their applications there. So I think why now is because we're seeing the capital investment, we've got services out in the market that are getting traction, and we can see that there's a demand for those applications out there. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, the short summary too is that once these compute resources are available, people are finding interesting ways to use them. So, you know, we want to encourage more of that. So if you've got use cases that you're thinking of, uh, we'd love to hear them. Uh, but certainly when those compute resources are out there, uh, we're, we absolutely are seeing, um, you know, uh, utilization of those. And in some cases, it's for use cases that you wouldn't have thought um, uh, you know, may have made sense, whether that's load balancing or load testing or, you know, other types of sort of media workflows and, and extensions on uh, existing uh, existing workloads. So, uh, Charlie, I think we've got time for maybe one more question or should we uh, should we yeah, wrap sure. up for today? Uh, let's, let's do one more. Um, from an ISP perspective, we have a question from an ISP, an internet service provider, a last mile provider, uh, about how edge computing could help. And it talks about uh, reducing bandwidth costs or um, uh, ex increasing QOE, uh, quality mm -hmm. of experience. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think generally speaking, no one wants to see sort of a, a, a any kind of a dialogue that says I'm waiting for something, right? So we've become certainly less patient for, for most things. So, you know, I, I think that is, when we think about quality of experience, that really speaks to latency and the idea that you want to continue to increase the servicing of your customers. Uh, mm -hmm. Steve, I don't know if you want to go into a little bit more about you know, some of the other things we're thinking of. Yeah, sure. I mean, there's, as Ed says, there's certainly the application side, but then if you think about Edge as a service provider and you think about the use of your resources in your network, we've also um, had great success in deploying 
CDN and other caching services into other locations. And of course, they can also be used for things like our edge functions environment and bare metal and VM environments. So there certainly is benefit in talking with us about how as an ISP, you can make use of um, uh, cache and CDN services that are either deployed into your network with us or are dedicated for some use or are there for specific um, traffic profiles that you have for a particular population. So I, I'd suggest you um, we make sure we have your details on registration and we can have a conversation about how we can help you. Very good. Um, I do have a question about how Limelight compares to other edge compute uh, alternatives. Thoughts on that? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, certainly um, there's plenty of competition uh, out in the marketplace. Um, I, you know, I think Limelight has some unique capabilities and I think it certainly starts with the network that we have. So the idea that you've got a, um, you know, fast, low latency network that has unique locations and is not, you know, trans, you know, transferring data across the public internet is really the, the place to start. And, yeah. and then think of us as, you know, now uh, with the adoption of edge computing is turning on infrastructure services that allow you to, to, to sort of take advantage of those locations uh, to get to your users. So I would say, you know, it's certainly early days in the market. Um, but there, and there definitely are a number of competitors, but I would encourage you to, to consider Limelight, consider our uh, developer offerings. Um, and we've got a lot of uh, really um, great capabilities that allow you to take advantage of not only the location and the compute, but really that, that low latency network. Uh, Steve, anything to add? I, I think, you know, what we've seen in some of the engagements we've done where people are, are, are coming to look at the benefits, you know, it's when you get into a situation where you can compare, you know, what are key performance indicators for your application environment against where it's deployed in, in a cloud or, or a, you know, other data center environment. And we consistently see KPIs around time to access or latency to user or latency between application instances as the key benefit that people are, are getting. Um, so yeah, you know, it's always worth, as with anything, having a clear plan of what is it I need to achieve and what are the areas I'm going to use as levers to improve my performance and measuring them in, in sort of uh, straightforward tests uh, so that you can see the benefits of deploying into different environments. Very good. All right. Well, uh, thank you, uh, gentlemen, for hosting this uh, very informative session. Thank you to our attendees who came and joined us today. Now, if you look in the chat, you will see a couple of links uh, to an Edge ebook, uh, which answers uh, in some detail a lot of questions about Edge computing. And there's also a link to a uh, free trial. And so those are both in the chat if you want to look there. And then furthermore, if you go to the Limelight website, uh, limelight.com, uh, you will find a wealth of more information about uh, Edge services. Uh, we have some solutions for media and entertainment, gaming and software industries available as well in the resources tab. And with that, once again, thanks everyone for your time, for your attention, for your attendance. Please reach out if there is anything um, we can do to help you in your journey to understand how edge compute can help solve your business problems, Limelight's here to help. Thank you very much.